Hi everybody, I'm Mia and today I'm doing the bread book tag. I was tagged by the wonderful Charlotte from Charlotte's Reads. I will link her video down below, make sure to go check it out and subscribe to her. I do not know who the original creator of this tag was, but I will make sure to link their original video in the description box as well. So we have a set of 15 questions, each has a bread type, and then there's a question associated with that bread type. I have not looked at these questions before, um, so it's just going to be like my first opinion on the question. I won't really give myself much time to think about it, I'll just go for my first one. And also, do you like my beanie? I bought it today from Conmon. I really like it. So yeah. It's getting really cold around New Zealand now because we're in the last few weeks of autumn and then we're moving into winter. Sad. No more sunbathing, no more beaches. And today is actually my last day before I go back to school, which I'm actually quite lucky because everyone's already at school pretty much. Like, my school is basically the only one that hasn't fully started yet. Yesterday we had a teacher only day and today, which is Tuesday, is year 12 and 13 only. I'm year 11 so I don't have to go. And then tomorrow everyone else is starting back up on Wednesday. So it would be nice to have that three day week to start the real school time off. So the first question is white. At what work of 21st century fi genre fiction you could see studying in the years to come? Okay, for sure. Oh, I just tip some things over. Okay, so for sure John Green books, they are super, super have that vibe, you know? Probably Turtles All the Way Down because of the, um, like the rep of mental illness in it. It's like this, um, the, there's a 16 year old girl called Aza. It's been a hot minute since I've read this book, but I believe she has OCD? I think she has OCD and she's trying to figure out who killed someone? No? No, she, she's trying to find this person that's run away so she can win some money. I should definitely read this book again because um, so many people said it's like their favourite book ever but when I read it I didn't think it was like a top, top pick for me. I think I got it for my 13th birthday maybe which was two years ago so it's it's probably time I reread it, and there's also some like mystery element in it as well, so I can see this being studied in future years. Alright, question two is whole wheat. A work you are reluctant to read but feel you need to read at some point. Okay, there's quite a few of these here. Probably. Um, oh wait, I've got a I've got a good one down here. So, um, Allegiant, which is the third book in the Divergent series. So, I am a series finisher. This Divergent series was the first series I ever did not complete. I read the first two books and I loved them, and then I started this, and it's dual perspective, and at the time, my brain just couldn't handle it, because I kept losing track of who was talking, and I was like, but wait, your mum's dead, so why are you spending time with her? And then it was just so confusing. So I think I read about 50 pages or so of this, and then I DNF'd it. So I do want to start the whole Divergence series again and make sure I read this one. Question 3, Italian. A writer that can write in any genre or category. Hmm. Most of the writers on my shelf that I have only write in one genre, which is fantasy for the main part. I feel like any fantasy author could just write a solid romance contemporary without the fantasy elements, you know? So my babe Cassandra Clare, she could do amazing contemporary romance, just take out all the fantasy elements. Sure, it wouldn't be as enjoyable as a fantasy reader myself, but I'm sure she would totally nail it. And then she could just replace some of those elements with sci-fi, futuristic elements, and then it would be a sci-fi. Mystery or thriller might be a bit difficult, since it's quite different. But some of these, like the earlier books, have um, 
mystery elements to them because they're trying to find a missing person. If you don't know, Cassandra Clare is my favourite author, the author of The Shadowhunter Chronicles, which is a um, young adult fantasy saga series. Made, it's made up of loads of different series and she's she is coming out with an adult book next year I believe called Swordcatcher so that will be I want to read that and see how different it is from her young adult books. Number four is garlic. Which genre or category would you argue has the most versatility and why? Fantasy. Because it doesn't just include elements from our world, it includes elements from outside worlds and so many different characters with so many different sexualities, different races, different cultures, everything is just in these beautiful books. I will say at the start it's quite basic, like um, heteronormative with white people, but as you go through the books it does get a lot more diverse and obviously there's loads of mythical creatures and things, everything you could ever want really. Five, Pumpernickel. What is Pumpernickel? That, that's probably something American which I have no idea what it is. Cool, moving on. A work that was hard to digest. I haven't really read too many of these heavy books. Maybe The Fault in Our Stars. A very emotional roller coaster for me. Probably my favourite contemporary, maybe? As you know, it is very hard for a contemporary to be good in my eyes, but this one had me feeling all the feels. Um, it has also been a hot minute since I read this one. It is about Hazel and Augustus who both have cancer and then they like work through their issues together, go on fun trips. It's a it's a wild ride honestly and I was crying for days after I even finished it and it was it was an experience. Okay, so number six is Rye, an overbearing perspective in a given work. I don't know what that means. I looked at Charlotte's answer. It doesn't give me any more insight to the question, to be honest. So I'm just going to skip it. <laughs> question seven, Sourdough, a writer whose work are usually cynical, isn't it? Oh, whose works are usually cynical. A writer whose works are usually cynical, I can't read. I always get cynical and sceptical mixed up, so let me just... I don't really have anything for that, nothing really springs to mind. So we're just gonna do the next thing. Eight, Banana, a character that has made something out of a given situation. Yes! You guys know what I'm choosing. City of Bones. Um, Clary, who is the she th she thinks she is a human, just she's just a human. But then when the shadow hunters whisk her into their world, she doesn't really know what's going on, but she manages to accept it and integrate it into her life, like without a blink of an eye she dedicates herself to the Shadowhunter world and after a life of being in the human world that seems like a massive sacrifice and she is just doing the best she can in a given situation what she is in. Boom. Number six, Chala, a work that has helped you develop a better understanding of Judaism. I haven't read many um, Jewish books that include Judaism in them, but in City of Bones, Clary's best friend Simon is Jewish. He's not in it very much after she enters the Shadowhunter world because he's a human and he like can't, they're like, no, you can't join. Um, but I did kind of get a slight grasp on Judaism, but not, not really that much, but that's the best I got. Matzo, a work that reminds you about the importance of modesty. 
also City of Bones, I'm going to be honest, because Jace here, he's, he's this side. This is the movie copy, by the way, not the original book cover. But um, Jace is super arrogant, and I really hated his character. And that makes me think, if I'm like that, then no one's going to want to be around me. So I've got to be modest and not arrogant, be humble, be nice, not like Jace Wayland because no one likes to show off. Daily, a book that should be in every standard family household. Ah, oh, good one. Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief or just the whole Percy Jackson series. I'm slowly making my way through. I'm up to... I just finished the second book in the Heroes of Olympus series. I don't know if this is the right way for you guys, but this is the original Percy Jackson series. Starting off... well, I'm missing one, but we have Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters, in I don't have it, but there's Percy Jackson and the Titan's Curse, Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth, and Percy Jackson and the Last Olympian. These are amazing books, middle grade, which integrate Greek mythology into all of them. I have learnt so much from these books and I now have an interest for Greek mythology and I think everyone needs to read these. They are enjoyable, you teach about mythology, everything you could ever ask for pretty much. Baguette, name three books that are perfect to dip in and dip out. So does that kind of mean like read when you feel like it? I would never kind of read half of a book and then stop and then read another book. But maybe I'll take that as a series, like read one book of a series and then read like the next book or in another series. Maybe, oh, these are good ones. All right, these two I haven't read but they're also part of the Riordan verse. So we have Magnus Chase series, this is the first book, The Sword of Summer, and the Trials of Apollo series, this is the first book, The Hidden Oracle. These two are set at the same time, I believe. So reading one of one series and then reading one of another series is a good way to stay in the time frame, I guess, and keep up with what happens at the same time between both of them. And then for the third one, I guess, I don't really know if the third one, these two are a pair, I guess so. Moving on, number 13, Olive Garden Breadstick, an unexpectedly great book you read this year. I wouldn't say it's great, but it was a whole lot better than what I was expecting. Twilight by Stephanie Meyer is about Isabella Swan who moves to Forks, but she hates Forks. She does it to make her mum happy so her mum can move in with her mum's boyfriend. And she discovers Edward Cullen, who hears many secrets, and she tries to discover them and is wished away into his world. I was expecting this a one star, considering all of the reviews very controversial. Um, but. It's a fantasy, so I thought even if even if it's going to be trash, it's still a fantasy, right? It still has hope, you know? So I read it, and I gave it four stars, which is a whole lot better than I thought it was going to be. I will definitely be continuing on with the series, and today I actually bought the novella, which you should see in my next video, which I think will be a book haul. Um, the Short Second Life of Brie Tanner, I have no idea what that means, because I haven't read like new moon and eclipse to get up to it but I will hopefully yes so definitely way better than I was expecting number 14 what is your favorite kind of bread literally any bread I love except from the really seedy Ugh, I don't like seedy but out of these ones probably baguette or I love garlic bread oh yeah garlic is there as well number four Garlic bread is my garlic bread, garlic bread, I think. Bread truck, who do you tag? I don't know too many people. The only person I really know on the booktube world is Charlotte, and she was the one that tagged me, so I can't exactly tag her back. 
But if you are watching this and you want to do this tag, I will definitely leave the questions in the description below. Do them if you want. If you don't feel like it, then don't. But I'm tagging you so you have permission to do it if you really want to. So thank you to each and every one of you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below if you have done this tag, if you want to do this tag, if you agree with my book choices, if you don't, literally anything you want. And I guess I will see you in the next video. Bye!